Welcome to episode 2 of our Approach Control tutorial series. This is Tyler with Flying Development Studio, and today we're talking about the different services provided by the Approach Controller. In later videos, we'll break down everything a little bit further, but for now, we're going to be working two F-16s on a training mission in the Palmdale area of Southern California. The first service I want to talk about is the GPS approach. On Infinite Flight, the GPS approach is much like the ILS approach in the sense that you're getting glide slope and localizer information, making it a precision approach. It's a precision approach because it's giving you altitude and heading all the way to the ground. So I've highlighted on your screen the GPS approach area for runway 22. And this is where we're going to start to vector NASA 1. If you're flying into a busy airport, you can definitely expect the GPS approach if you're flying to a runway that is not served by an ILS, which leads us to our next service. The ILS approach is just like the GPS approach on Infinite Flight in the sense that it has glide slope and localizer information. If you look on your map, there's cones that extend from the runway. The red cone is going to be your ILS approach, and the white cone will be your GPS approach. So I've circled here the runway 25 ILS area, and this is where we're going to start to vector NASA 2. On infinite flight, even if you have a flight plan, you can still be vectored for the ILS approach or GPS approach. This allows the approach controller to maintain some level of organization and it's best utilized whenever you have low visibility situations. After finishing a touch and go, NASA 1 is going to come back to us and finish their training mission by requesting two, flight following to Crystal, which is east of Palmdale. Flight following allows an aircraft to fly to their destination without receiving an altitude assignment or a vector. Now, aircraft may be vectored or given a different altitude if they're interfering with other traffic. So if you already have a flight plan as an aircraft, simply request flight following to that destination or simply check in with approach. Now, as you approach the arrival phase of your flight, you are subject to vectors and altitudes to be vectored for an ILS, GPS approach, or even just radar vector to enter the VFR pattern. As NASA-1 approaches Crystal, he's going to begin some low-level mountain training. To do that, he's going to need to request VFR flight. VFR simply means that you'll see and avoid other aircraft, and I will no longer be responsible for separation of NASA-1 with other aircraft. So that leads us to our last service, radar vectors. NASA-2 is departing Palmdale and requesting radar vectors to General William Fox Airfield, just north of Palmdale. For radar vectors, we're simply going to vector the aircraft to that airport, and prior to handing off, we're going to descend the aircraft to pattern altitude. Now for jets, that's going to be 1,500 feet above field elevation. The last thing I want to do is double check the field elevation on the information tab, and then once I see that NASA 2 is pointed towards the airport and about 10 miles away, we'll give the frequency change. So these are all the services provided by the approach controller. Thanks for watching the video and for more, subscribe to the YouTube channel and visit community.infiniteflight.com. This is Tyler with Flying Development Studio and we'll see you next time.